Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, Force here, and today we'll be taking a look at Legacy of Cain Soul Reaver. This game was originally released in 1999 as the sequel to 1996's Blood Omen. The game was developed by Crystal Dynamics and published by Eidos Interactive, and if you're wondering, Force, why are you looking at such an old game? Uh, the reason is that an HD version of the Legacy of Cain series was just recently released, and this particular game, Soul Reaver, holds a special place in my heart. So here in this video, I'll be showing you a first 40 look at Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver. And the funny thing is, I have uh, very fond memories, but since I haven't played this game in over 12 years, I also don't remember very much. Uh, so this should be a pretty interesting experience here with this first 40. Uh, just to give you a general overview, it's a third-person game. It's played from a third-person perspective uh, with a fixed camera that rotates around based on your uh, positioning with the environment and things you're interacting with. And it's based on like vampires and in the underworld and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and take a first 40 look at Legacy of Cain, Soul Reaver. I know you, Raziel. You are worthy. What madness is this? What pitiful form is this that I have come to inhabit? Death would be a release next to this travesty. You did not survive the abyss, Raziel. I have only spared you from total dissolution. I would choose oblivion over this existence. The choice is not yours. I am destroyed. You are reborn. The birth of one of Cain's abominations traps the essence of life. It is this soul that animates the corpse you lived in. And that, Raziel, is the demise of Nazgoth. There is no balance. The souls of the dead remain trapped. I cannot spin them in the wheel of fate. They cannot complete their destinies. Redeem yourself. Or if you prefer, avenge yourself. Settle your dispute with Cain. Destroy him and your brethren. Free their souls, and let the wheel of fate churn again. Use your hatred to weave their souls. I can make it possible. Become my soul reaver. My angel of death. All right, my friends, welcome once again to our first 40 look at Legacy of Cain Soul Reaver, the HD version. Uh, now, before we get started here, I just want to give you a little bit of a history lesson or a backstory to this franchise. This is technically the second game in the Legacy of Cain uh, series. The first one, Blood Omen, was played from a top down perspective. Now, Soul Reaver changed that to third person, put the focus on puzzle solving and action adventure gameplay. So, you'll see some light combat and platforming and stuff like that. Uh, early on here, we've got a little bit of a tutorial, so I'll try to be quiet for those cutscenes, like this one here. These gates twist space, laying a path across great spans. Now I know I said I haven't played this game in 12 plus years, and technically that's true. I spent a little bit of time just prior to this video just familiarizing myself with the controls, because again, with this HD remake, I am I am playing on the PC, although I do believe a, a version on the PS3 is available. Uh, now, the original game came to the PlayStation and Dreamcast, I believe. I particularly played it on the PlayStation, but um, yeah. Anyways, uh, I just want to quickly mention this here. This is a fast travel system, and it's used to, as you unlock these various gates, uh, travel throughout the game, you're able to, when coming back to the game, quickly travel from point A to B. And you'll be able to do this and use this to uh, go back and, and go to maybe secret hidden areas that you weren't able to access before and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, just a little a little interesting waypoint system. Uh, there's a fair amount of these. Oh look, this one has uh, a little soul on the other side. And uh, we'll be actually taking a look at the soul system in just a moment. I don't need to go through any more of those. But yeah, just a, a way to quickly access one point to another, and we'll get to see that in action as we go through this game here. I'm excited. I am so excited. Again, I have such fond memories of this title. I just remember playing in my room. This was pre-high school even. I think this was like 7th or 8th grade in 1999. Good times. Good times indeed. You are weak. You must feed. 
The old hunger has left me. I have no desire for blood. You are changed. Your bloodthirst is replaced by a deeper need. You have become a devourer of souls. To sustain your strength, you must hunt the lost spirits of the underworld and consume the souls of your enemies. So my character, Raziel, who used to be a vampire, is now a soul reaver. And to stay alive, he must consume souls. I am playing with the mouse and keyboard, or technically it's just the keyboard. The mouse really doesn't come into play here. Uh, you can also, of course, play with the control if you were to hook the controller up to the PC. But mouse and keyboard working for me. And you can see we've got all those indicators here. Space bar to jump. Again, a little bit of uh, light platforming takes place here. And then C in space bars to high jump to get to those more difficult to reach locations. Your wings, though ruined, are not without purpose. Take hold of them as you leap, and they will carry you across this chasm. And while I am unable to fly as a proper vampire should be able to, I do have the ability to uh, grab onto my wings and do a bit of gliding with a uh, holding down the space bar there. How excellent, huh? And we've got some combat coming up around the corner. What scabrous wretches are these? Sure, the scavengers of the underworld. Their feral hunger has claimed countless souls. Spirits who now shall never find their rest. I used to think these guys were terrifying. They just look super stupid now. Uh, so, so the combat system... Um, there's just a basic attack, and there's also the ability to like pick things up. Uh, you can also hold down S to face nearby opponents, and you can use spacebar to do a bit of a dash, either uh, dashing out of the way or towards somebody. And that guy, he just turned into a spirit, so I can grab his soul up. And the consuming of souls is essentially your health uh, replenishing system. Uh, this is so annoying. I remember chasing these guys around and around. Really quickly get that one though. How glorious. Alright, so let's uh, hop up here. Make our way to the next section. The tutorial is fairly brief though, so don't worry. It's not going to be uh, doing this for much longer. It opens up very shortly. And now the ability to switch planes. These portals are your conduit between the spectral and material realms. With their aid, you may gather matter and will yourself to become manifest in the physical world. This is taxing, however. Your strength must first be fully restored. You require no conduit to return to this plane. You may abandon your physical body at any time. Okay, so these little conduits, uh, as he stated, are used to travel from the spiritual world, which we're in now, to the physical realm. And we can do that by going through that. And as you can see, this little there's these little dots that go around. You're eventually able, I don't remember what exactly they entail, but you're eventually able to transform into, I think, either different realms or different versions, something like that. But anyways, we're going to hit A to cast and go from spiritual to physical realm. And this allows us... Sustain your strength to prolong your manifestation in the physical world. Mm. If you fail to feed or absorb too many wounds, this fragile matter will dissolve. So being in the physical realm allows us to interact with physical objects like picking up weapons and rocks, uh, moving objects, and uh, things of that nature. There's also different enemy types in the physical realm as opposed to the spiritual realm. And as he uh, was just stating there, uh, over time, you, you, your strength in this realm, your ability to stay in this realm, will be you diminish. Yet, Raziel. You still retain many of your vampiric weaknesses. Immersion in water, while not fatal, will dissolve your physical body, forcing your return to the spirit world. Be aware that in the spectral realm, water has neither heft nor lift. It stands as thin as air. So in the bottom right, that little bar that essentially represents my health, it's the spirits that I've consumed, but you're going to notice it's slowly depleting over time, and that's that puts some urgency while you're in the physical realm to actually uh, get cracking and and, well, do something. Kill some people, interact with some objects, you know. 
Well, basically just kill some things and get some souls, but yeah. Yeah, I need to constantly refill that or else you're going to start to run into trouble. What are these creatures? Do you not recognize them? They are the children of your brother, Duma. That's impossible. These foul, scuttling beasts could not be king of our high blood? Do you suppose that time stood still for you, Rasiel? Much has changed since you passed from the world of men. Alright, so we get some new enemy types there. We have to take them out. I knew my opponent's weaknesses, having suffered them myself. Physical wounds are fleeting. Vampire's immortal flesh begins to close as soon as it is cleaved. Vampires need only fear those wounds that impale or inflame. Water scorches like acid, and fledglings are devastated by sunlight's touch. I would have to modify my tactics to suit my foes. Alright, so these vampiric enemies can only be impaled, thrown into water, or... thrown into light. Also, they can be set aflame. Um, so there's two of them, so I gotta be a little more careful. And what's gonna happen is we engage them, and as we get them low, they will go into sort of a disoriented state. Um, and then I need to finish them off by throwing them into something, but not just a wall like that. I just I wanna take care of this guy first too. Okay, then we're gonna go grab him. We're gonna hold down F to grab him. And uh, I'm gonna throw him in the water. Okay, I'm trying to, I'm supposed to, he's not supposed to get picked up right away like that. I'm supposed to, what are you doing? All right, I'm holding down F, and it's supposed to be that he is, okay, there we go. So it finally worked. So I'm gonna throw him here into the light, and that should finish him off. There we go. The flesh, a creature's soul fades swiftly into the spectral realm. Draw it in quickly, Raziel, or you will be compelled to follow. Okay, so I need to quickly grab his soul my consumed soul ability. And then take out the next guy. Who is, where is he? Did he just walk into the light like an idiot? Yes, he did. <laughs> oh, he walked into the light, that's hilarious. Alrighty, awesome. Now the next goal is to find my way out of here. Your physical prowess surpasses what you knew in life. Even massive obstacles can be moved effortlessly. And I have got the ability to do this. Moving heavy objects. Now one thing interesting about this game um, is the camera. The way the camera works. So I've got zero control over the camera and the camera isn't just going to move in a direction depending on where you're facing. It's also going to depend on like where you are in relation to objects. For example, look where I'm standing. Now remember the last time I was standing here, the camera was faced differently. And I wonder if I can get that to occur another time, depending on how I go around. Okay, so this one is the same, but what if I interact with this this way? And you can see I'm standing over here, and now the camera again is in a different spot. Now, I, I really wish that they enabled mouse control for the camera, but I couldn't imagine the amount of work it would go into having to completely rework the camera. The annoying thing that I remember about this game is that there will be things that you cannot see unless you like get yourself in a proper angle. So it's sometimes difficult to find where to go. For example, I know that I need to go over here because if you go like this, you're going to notice, notice just up there is a little bit of a ledge. Like... How would you see that otherwise? Because running around here on the ground, it's very difficult to find. So what ends up happening is you go into these rooms and there'll be these ledges up high that you can't see and you just sort of have to run around the room until you get the proper camera angle and jump high enough to see where the ledge is. Uh, yeah, pretty frustrating and obviously by today's standards a bit archaic, <laughs> but I mean this is an old game so it is what it is. I just remember always being frustrated by that, and sometimes the, the most difficult thing about the game in, uh, in trying to solve puzzles was just figuring out where to go because you couldn't see everything with the way the cameras were facing, so. My God. The sanctuary of the clans reduced to ruin. Beyond these walls lay the pillars of Nosgoth, the seat of Cain's empire. How humble it now appeared collapsing into the dust of its former magnificence. And yet, I had only just emerged. In the instant between my execution and resurrection, centuries had apparently passed. 
This world is wrecked with cataclysms. The Earth strains to shrug off the pestilence of Cain's parasitic empire. The fate of this world was preordained in an instant by a solitary man. Unwilling to martyr himself to restore Nosgoth's balance, Cain condemned the world to the decay you see. In that moment, the unraveling began. Now it is clearly played out. Nosgoth teeters on the brink of collapse. Its fragile balance cannot hold. A little bit of a history there. History about the world that we're in. And uh, any... Uh, let me say this. I feel like I should have said this earlier, but... Please pardon my ignorance, any Legacy of Cain experts out there, because I will be the first to admit I don't know... Lore-wise, even what's going on in this game, I really don't know. I just remember like playing it, I, that I liked playing it as a kid, and that's why I wanted to make this video. I'm sure there's going to be some people who have been playing Legacy of Kane since it was released in 1999. Uh, Soul Reaver, since it was released in 99, and like been playing it for the past, uh, what, 14 or whatever years? <laughs> I'm sorry, I am not that guy, and that's cool that you are, but I'm just not at that I don't know. I don't know the secrets. I don't know much of the, the story. I just know it, it, it was a fun game. I enjoyed playing it as a kid, and I wanted to uh, wanted to make a video about it. So there you go. Any super super experts on the series, please feel free to enlighten me below. I'll be happy to learn more. But yeah, don't expect much insight into the lore in this video because that's never what I was into. Just in games in general, I'm I'm just more into the gameplay. And uh, the environment too. Like I love, I love good environments, and I always felt that. I just remember remembering so much about this game and being so um, enthralled to it. Now I can hold down S to sneak attack, so we can go up nice and stealthy here, and then stab <laughs> the pack. Oh, I love it! I love it. Uh, stealth from 1999. Who does not love that? That's fantastic. A little bit of an overhang here. Steez. Shh, shh. I'm gonna sneak attack. I'm gonna sneak attack, guys. Come on. You die. Die, thank you. Now we're gonna impale him. Now, if you impale these guys and you don't grab their souls and you pick up your weapon, they come back. So don't do that. If you happen to get this game. I hope someone picks up this game because of this video. Just because, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I thought it was great. Again, I thought uh, I was, uh, have very fond memories of this. Now, this little door here is going to lead to one of our, our first unlocked point in the Waygate system or whatever the... The fast travel system is, I suppose, the way to pr properly describe what it is. I'm just going to show you how this works here. So we're going to go up. And now we've got access to this current point, which is the one with the, you know, those little, two little arcs with the spiral through it. So what we can do here is you go up to these gates, and I can travel back to the start by just walking through, like this. So now... I am at the location that I was at the very start of this game. Um, let me see if I can show you. I think it's this way. It should be this way, right? Or is this going up? Let's go. Is this the right way? Well, let me just go this way. <clears throat> Either way, it'll be uh, clear. So here we go. So this is where we first encountered our ability to inhale souls, remember, at the very start. Um, so yeah, you're able to again use those use those systems to quickly travel from one of those way gates to another. What is it? I think way gates the term. I don't know. Does it really matter? No, not that much. I don't believe so. And so now we're able to just quickly go back onto it and go to where we just were, which is this one. So just gonna walk forward, and here we go. Now I do also have here my weapon that was dropped. Those those stay persistent. Oh, damn it! I'm just trying to pick up this weapon. Get out of here. Pick up the weapon, please. Pick up the weapon. Pick up the weapon. Oh, I hate you. Ah, oh, it's not gonna let me pick up the weapon, is it? It's gonna keep trying to lock me into this. <clears throat> well, this is horrendous. Whatever. 
I'll just get another weapon. Oh, it's because I'm in the spiritual realm. What a dope. Let's go into the <laughs> let's go into the physical realm so we can pick that up. Alright, so it should work now. <clears throat> I believe. I'm still walking onto this thing. I'm just trying to not be on the thing and close enough to forget it. Forget it. I'm gonna go get something else. <laughs> there are more weapons to be had. It is fine. For example, we could pick up a torch on a wall. We could even oh, he's back. He's back. This is problematic. I don't have a weapon right now, so I can't impale him. All right, well we're just gonna daze him and then run out of here then, because I don't have the ability to impale him. Maybe I might be able, I might have been able to throw him on some flame or something around there. I guess I could throw him in the water over here, huh? This at least had remained constant. The endlessly swirling vortex of the abyss. My tomb and the womb of my rebirth. Though much of Noscot's landscape had changed, these cliffs gave me my bearings. My clan territory was to the west. I was anxious to see how my descendants had fared during the centuries of my absence. So this is where his original form was killed in last game, I suppose. Uh, again, no lore expert, but based on the dialogue that just occurred, he said he was died in there and then obviously was reborn. So that's cool. That's something I didn't know. I don't think as a kid I even paid the, the smallest bit of attention to the story. I think now as, a, as an adult that's something that interests me more in games, but my, my focus is still gameplay. Always will be. I'm just a sucker for owning nubs. And then we finish him off by impaling him with some flame. Unfortunately, as a result, we end up losing the flame on this, and I have to rekindle it at a fire somewhere. So hopefully we can see one of those coming up. Either that or some more spears. Glorious spears. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, those guys just showing up here. We got a weapon right here. Throw that. Oh, snap. Get out of here. Pick up the weapon. Thank you. Okay. Now time for some combat. I thought, yeah. I mean, this combat was so awesome back in the day. This looks pretty good. It's not bad. Remember, perspective. Got to keep perspective. When did this game come out? What else was out by then for combat? Oh, snap! Launch it. Hey, dealing with multiple guys is the worst. Come on. Need to just get one of these guys here. back, grab his soul up, and then deal with his buddy. There we go. Got him impaled. And grab his soul. So happy that they let you reuse the weapons after every, uh, after everything. That would be really sucky if they didn't. Is there anything up here or what? No, I can just jump up there. Is this something that I can move? Yeah? Nice. Now I wonder. So I wasn't hiding anything back there. So this is, this is the annoying part. So I can move this giant block, and clearly that would allow me to gain access to something. Like, I can gain access to that. I don't know how to open up those cages, though. I really don't remember how to open up those cages. And this is where some 
Soul Reaver Pro out there who either remembers the game from 1999, which I don't, or uh, recently played it prior to 12 years ago when I did. It's gonna be like, Force, what do you mean? Well, you're such an idiot. You don't know how to open up these cages. Brr. Can I just... Can't lock onto it. Can I suck in these diamonds or something? Like, I don't know. I just, I don't know how to gain access to this. I know, I know there's a way to do it. I just don't know that I, I just don't know that I know. Well, actually, I know that I don't know. So, that's, there is that. Whatever. I don't know. Like I just said. I don't know. My once proud kin wiped from this world like excrement from a boot. I knew the hand that wrought this deed. And let's just explore a little bit around here. Got some swords, some shields, and stuff on the wall there. That's cool. Come on, jump up. Thank you. So we got that over there. I wonder if I can. Is there anything that I can do over here? Yeah. Just wondering if I can get over there. Yeah. Okay. Is there any point to this? I don't know yet. We'll see. I'm over here. Can, is there anything that I can do? Uh, doesn't look like it. All for naught. All right, let's kill this thing. Two of them again. back over here, grab his soul real quick before the other guy shows up. Grab my weapon back. Yeah. In impaled. <laughs> so satisfying. Alright, so we got another waypoint that we can unlock. Already two of them. Two of the however many there are. There we go, so now we've got access to this one. And I'm not gonna show it to you again because I think by now you understand how it works, but uh, it's just the simple act of unlocking them for future reference is a good thing. I think something that's pretty interesting about this uh, is how few enemies there are. But it still feels like an experience, you know what I mean? I mean, there's very few enemies. I'll go into a room and there'll be like one or two enemies at most. But at the same time, while it's not difficult to deal with, it's um... Look at that, that was hilarious. <laughs> it still can be, you know, trying to maneuver your way around them and everything can can be a pain in the butt. I think we could go left too. I'm gonna check this right section first though. <laughs> what? This is hilarious. So remember, I gotta grab his soul before I pick my weapon back up, or else. There it is. Took him out. Like a boss. Yeah, I like this. It's... it's ancient. It's, um... Definitely doesn't hold a candle to today's action platformer games, but it's something special and it's part of the evolution. You know, it's part of the evolution of games. This is this is part of it, man. It's games like this that brought about modern day action platformers and puzzle solvers and things like that. You know, this, Tomb Raider, all those sorts of things. God, remember Tomb Raider? I love those games too. Oh, 
Oh, a rock. All right. Throw this at someone. Is anyone to throw it at? There we go. Here's someone. Well, that didn't. <laughs> that didn't appear to do much. Let me go pick up my spear again. Jeez, I'm crow. <laughs> That's really funny. I'm like, oh great, a giant boulder. That should that should do the trick, right? Not so much. Oh, look at those flame animations. Gets no better. It gets no better. Let me just walk around here, see if there's any shenanigans going on. Any shenanigans? Anything occurring around here? No, not really. Yeah, come on, guys. No shenanigans. See what I mean about so few enemies? There's like one enemy every... 300... Oh! Look at that. Sneaking up on me, buddy. Dispatched of. Can I break pottery? Nope. There's one pod in the room. Unbreakable. Operate the drawbridge without any strings. It's a magical drawbridge. Well, not strings. I mean rope. You know what I meant. Don't be a silly goose. That's the... I think that's a worse spear. I think that's like the one that I started out with, so I'm not gonna grab that. I'll stick with the one I have. No, please. <laughs> I didn't recognize these flayed racks of flesh. Their scent was vampiric. They gnawed upon their victim's carcass like dogs. Did you see the realism in that human model? <laughs> Did you see it, guys? That was really funny. <laughs> that was fantastic. Ugh. All right, get over here, you idiot. You and your realistic human model slaying. really funny. Oh, that was so bad. <laughs> uh, it's too much. Much too much. What an experience. What a trip, guys. I think if nothing else, this will be good for you guys to... What are you doing? Hello? Is he a human? I think he is. What are you doing? Why are you just standing there? Why didn't he... <laughs> I don't know why he didn't engage me at first. Uh, that was thoroughly confusing. This charnel house bore the unmistakable marks of Melchiah's clan. To what depths had our dynasty plummeted if these ghouls were the descendants of my high-born brother? Were they so debased as to recruit fledglings from the desiccated corpses here interred? I think I saw another weapon over there. Kind of want to go grab it. What are you doing? What the heck? What? That didn't do anything. Look at this thing. Ooh, what is this? Look at this little, like, feral weapon or something. I assume that these weapons are better, or they're just different. I don't even know. <laughs> I do not even know. I think we're gonna go a little bit further here before we cut this video. This is exciting, though. I'm really excited to revisit a game of old. It's HD remakes, man. I tell ya. I wanted to take a look at um. I also 
I also wanted to take a look at Tony Hawk's Pro Skater HD. That game was just so unplayable on the mouse, on the mouse and keyboard. My brother Melkia was made last, and therefore received the poorest portion of Cain's gift. Although immortal, his soul could not sustain the flesh, which retained much of its previous human frailty. This weakness, it seemed, was passed on to his offspring. Their fragile skins barely contained the underlying decay. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm still, yeah, I'm still that guy who still needs to pick up a control. Like I said, I was gonna do a million times before. But it's nice, you know, it's nice to take these trips back, and I, I can't say that. I wonder if it's almost dangerous, because if you go back to these games, you realize, wow, they were kind of janky, and like, for example, the camera angle is so bad in this, and not having that control, and, and having difficulty solving puzzles as a result of that, really obnoxious, you know? But it's a good trip down memory lane, if nothing else. And it's, you know, nice to see your roots if you're involved in gaming and to go back to the games that you played as a kid and see what, you know, part of that evolution towards modern day games. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world to revisit that. Do you? No, I don't. This has been fun though. Fun little trip. The days of your yesteryear, who? <laughs> All right, guys. I think we're gonna wrap up this uh, this first 40 look at Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver, the HD version here of the series. Uh, so there's Soul Reaver, Soul Reaver 2, and Defiance. Those three games are currently available in a up updated version. Again, HDified. I got mine on Steam. Someone told me that it was also available on good old games, and they were like mad at me for not mentioning that as well. I don't know. I check Steam for everything, pretty much. Unless it's, it's either on Steam or Origin for the most part, most of the games that I play on the PC. But, yeah. It's available on Steam at the least, possibly elsewhere. I think a version came to the PSP as well as the PlayStation 3, so you can probably get it through digital download there as well. Uh, each game running at $9.99... Which actually, that's something I wanted to mention too. Sort of surprising that they're charging $10 for this. Um, I think it'd be easier to get people to buy it for like five bucks. I think that that would be something that people would be more likely to bite on. $10 seems like a, I don't know, because there's a lot of new games for $10. That, but this is, you know, this isn't for someone who's never, like this, no one who's never played this game is probably gonna pick up the HD version, right? That seems highly unlikely. It'll mostly be people who want to go back and re-experience uh, those games that they played as a kid, which is what I'm doing here. So, there you go. Maybe ten bucks isn't too much fast to ask for that sake. Could just wait for a Steam sale too. So, whatever. All right, guys. Thanks again for watching this first 40 look here at Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver. It was fun. A nice little trip down memory lane. I've enjoyed my time here. Hopefully you guys have as well. Impale on fools. If you like the content, please subscribe, and as always, keep watching and keep owning.
Oh, <laughs> no.